So in this video, I'm going to talk about how Hitler achieved total power from July of 1933 until August of 34. <clears throat> so we're looking at the next bit in the story, really, the next year. In the last video, we looked at how Hitler established his dictatorship by July of 33, and we said that he did that in four different ways. He did it by removing the communists. He removed democracy. He produced, he followed the policy of Gleichschaltung, or bringing the Germans into line. And lastly, he removed opposition. Now, he did have a dictatorship by July of 33, but he did not have total power. And total power didn't really come to Hitler until August of 1934. And in this picture here, you can see Hitler at the Nuremberg Rally in 1934, ascending the steps as like a godlike figure. Now, in order to get to that point, in that year, there were three barriers that Hitler had to face. Three hurdles he had to get over in order to move from being a dictator in July of 33 to total power in 34. I'm going to talk about how he got rid of those three barriers. The first big barrier to Hitler's having total power were the local governments and the courts. The local government in Germany in 1933 was really quite strong and was actually a barrier to him having total power. The court system in Germany was also quite strong and quite independent. So Hitler went about trying to remove both of those problems. Firstly, in January of 1934, he passed an act or a law called the Act for the Reconstruction of the States. That completely ended the power of the local governments. Rather than being Lander, which is a German word for local government at the time, he turned them into something called Gaus. So he divided Germany into really different Gaus around the country. And he put his own men, his own Nazi men, into those regions. So in other words, Hitler controlled the local government himself. Secondly, with the courts... The German courts were a problem for him, so as a result of that, he created his own new court system. And he called those the People's Courts. Here's a picture of one. Now, in the People's Courts, they were a completely separate system. And in that system, the judges, who all had to swear an oath to Hitler, um, made very quick decisions and harsh sentences were given. And the death penalty, as a result of that, skyrocketed in Germany. So... Really, by April of 1934, he'd already solved the problem of local government and the courts. The second barrier was probably the biggest to him having total power. And there were two real problems for him and two potential forms of opposition, the SA and the conservative politicians. Now, the SA, it might seem quite strange to say that that was potential opposition, but it was. This man, who we've come across before... Zernst Rom. He ran the SA, or the Nazis' army, and Rom and the SA were a real force to be reckoned with. And by 1934, there were over 3 million brown shirts, or SA, soldiers in Germany at this point. And Rom fell out with Hitler, and he fell out with Hitler over the army. Rom wanted to take over the army, the German army, the normal army, and Hitler refused and said that he didn't agree with that. Now, the problem there was that Rom had three million men who he could tell what to do. Hitler knew that that was a potential imbalance of power. He knew that that was potentially um, a threat to his own power and he needed to sort it out. Secondly, Hitler was also cautious and concerned over the power that some other conservative politicians had. Now, this is one of them, and his name's Franz von Papen. And von Papen also had quite a lot of power within the German system, at this point, and there were rumours that began to be spread by 1934 that Hitler wanted, sorry, that von Papen wanted to take Hitler's power. As a result of these two potential threats to his power, Hitler really ran ahead with something which is probably one of the most significant events in Nazi history, and that was the Night of the Long Knives. Let's talk about what that is. So, first off, Hitler realised that Rom and the SA were a threat to his power, so he asked the SS to draw up evidence that Rom was planning an uprising. And this man you can see in this picture here, his name's Reinhard Heydrich, he is uh, not a very pleasant man in any way, and he was a member of the SS, and he started producing evidence that Rom was planning an uprising. It was completely faked, but it was the evidence that Hitler needed. As a result of that, on June the 30th, Hitler gathered all of the SA leaders at this hotel just outside of Munich. 
and at a meeting Hitler arrested the entirety of the SA leadership including Rom. Lots of the SA leaders that evening were killed that evening. Rom himself wasn't. Rom was given a few days uh, in jail where he was encouraged to take his own life and when he refused Rom was also murdered. Now if you remember back I just said there were two potential threats to his power the SA and the conservative leadership so all this stuff here with the SA was happening in Munich. Meanwhile in Berlin von Papen's supporters were arrested also by the SS and lots of them were killed. Von Papen himself managed to escape um, but the rest of the S, uh, his leadership and the rest of his conservative supporters, really a lot of them were arrested and a lot of them were murdered. So the Night of the Long Knives, really important you understand this, was the SS killing the SA leaders and the conservative politicians in order to have Hitler have more power. As a result of that, the SS grew in power. The SS really reinforced themselves as the most... Uh, important element of Hitler's terror system and also Hitler had got away with murder quite literally got away with murder because nobody complained to that much of an extent so Hitler had now got rid of the local government the people's courts the SA and the conservative politicians there was only really one final barrier left for Hitler and that final barrier was President Hindenburg in the German system until 1934, President Hindenburg, Paul von Hindenburg, and a very famous First World War general, um, actually technically had more power than Hitler. But in 1934, he starts to get ill, and then in August of 1934, he dies. And after, as soon as he dies the next day, Hitler immediately decides he's going to merge the position of the president of Germany, Hindenburg's post, with his post of the Chancellor under a new title, Führer, and that German word means leader. So really, by 1934, by August of 1934, Hitler was the true Führer, the true leader of Germany, and had complete total power. Thank you.